Love this dude, Chad. Shout out to Rebound, man. What's good, everybody? You got me spam my IG at Cash Nasty. We got another special video from about Rebound. NBA players that almost died. Let's get to it. Life comes at you fast. One minute it you're does. playing basketball, the next, you're on a train back home. Go One day you're paying bills, and the next day, you shh. You, God, you know the crazy thing, man? You got to pay bills in order to survive in this life. And when you gone, you still got to pay bills. It, it is inevitable. Inevitable. We're getting that tatted on me. You got to pay bills. Because that casket, that funeral, the hospital, that bill been passed on to your family. Yeah. Make sure you got to pay your bills, man. Or, or, or God may send you to hell because you ain't paying bills on time. Going 150 miles per hour as it flies off his tracks. These are NBA players that almost died. And that train accident, that's exactly what happened to Nikola Vucevic. Back in 2006, what? Nikola was playing youth basketball in Montenegro. Him and his team, they had to get on a train to travel for a road game the next day. I heard that, Rebound. The Negro. I heard it. Him and his team, they had to get on a train to travel for a road game the next day. Everything seemed normal. Nicola and hundreds of others were doing what they do, just riding a train. But out of nowhere, everything changed. The train felt like it was floating, free falling, completely detached from reality, as Nicola heard nothing but screams before he blacked out. Nicola. Nicola was awake. He could still see, hear, smell. He was alive, working his way through broken glass. Nicola stood up, looked around, and realized just how lucky he was. To like your video! I don't know you rebound. Don't, 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 go, don't get my emotions always sad and go back into my liking your video. You cannot finesse a motherfucking finesse up. Yeah, I know he would do that. This is the type of videos he do it on. This tragedy all happened because the train's brakes failed. What? Causing the train to derail. Bro, that now, is a life changing Nicola experience. Nicola isn't the only player that's had it rough. Cause LaMelo Ball was almost murdered. Yeah, Didn't know back that. when LaMelo was just four years old, his dad took him to a gym in LA. At first, things were going great. He was playing ball, having a good family time. Until some adults started arguing across the gym. Now, being a curious kid, LaMelo wanted to go see the action. And while he was watching this argument go down, he heard one of the guys say, I'ma be back before walking out the front door. You know and what that means? That means Gibbet Arenas has left the building. You know he coming back with. Once this dude left, LaMelo got back to playing basketball with his dad. Got LaMelo a nice back normal. then. But just a few minutes later, the gym door burst open and LaMelo saw that same dude walk back in. Except this time, he started shooting up the entire gym. LaMelo saw everyone around him start screaming and running for the exits, but he was in so much shock that he just dropped his basketball and froze. LaMelo was just a child, seeing his short life flash before his eyes, thinking, is this already the end? Boy, you been hog ass, but all of a sudden, LaMelo was scooped up into someone's arms swung over their shoulders. And as he heard bullets flying past his head, he was carried out of the gym. LaMelo barely made it out with his life. And when he looked up to see who rescued him, it was none other than his dad, LeVar Ball. Well, Damn, any, any father would do that, any that father. We almost lost LaMelo before we even knew him. It's crazy. 
But at least LaMelo left without a scratch. Because Paul Pierce, on the other hand, he messed with the wrong woman. And the consequences left him fighting for his life. See, back in September of 2000, Pierce and his boys decided to hit up the Buzz nightclub in Boston. And being single at the time, Pierce started talking to some girls, you know, spitting some game. Mm -hmm. But there was one girl that really caught his eye. So Pierce approached, bought her a drink, and of course they hit it off. But uh, I don't really think her boyfriend liked that too much. What you doing? Do you a whole NBA player? What you doing? Get out of why? Why are you not in a section? If anything, they should be coming to you. The truth. So you messed up right there, bro. You know? Yeah. She already had a man, and he was watching this whole thing happen from across the bar. So the dude walked up got right in Pierce's face and told him to get the f out. But Pierce wasn't about to leave. He was just getting started. So he argued back, saying that he thought she was single and that it was just a misunderstanding. The boyfriend wasn't hearing it though. Some, some, people, some people be high-headed, bro, be insecure, bro, like that, man. You know? And he decided to squash this beef for good. So he called over his boys from across the room. And what happened next? almost killed Paul Pierce. Three dudes pulled out knives and started stabbing him. He is 6'6", six, six. and when you're going out in normal, pub, you know, in normal public, bro, you know, like, like, oh my gosh, bro. You know. Three times in the stomach and five times in the back. They wanted you dead. And as they were about to run away, they even hit Paul Pierce in the face with a beer bottle, sending him straight to the ground, laying in a pool of his own blood. This seemed like the end. What you doing going to the bar, bro? Like you should have a section that the body girl should be bringing the bottles. You know, everybody else should be coming to your section asking for pictures. Like, bro, what is this? Like, you got the game messed up back then. And I'm sure he matured now, you know, but jeez. Suddenly, two of Pierce's boys showed up and rushed him straight to the ER. That's where Pierce crazy, got bro. emergency surgery. And after two days in the hospital, his life was saved. Making this the most traumatic moment of his entire life. Now, knives and stabbing, uh, that's one thing but looking down the barrel of a gun, that's a whole different level that Damian Lillard had to fight through. Back in 2008, Dame was waiting at a bus stop after practice one night, all by himself. And when three guys walked by, they didn't see Dame. They saw an opportunity. The guys walked up to Dame and demanded that he hand over his backpack. Now, at this point, Dame was in high school and he was nearly six feet tall. I mean, he thought that he was a grown ass man. So he wasn't about to let these guys rob him for his stuff. Dame thought he could stand up to these guys and they'd walk away. Oh, the camera, oh man. Come on, Kevin, what's going on, man? You ain't paying bills on time? What's going on here, man? My bad, y'all. Oh, shit. I know I pay that light bill. What the hell is this? Wait, 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 Come on, man. She back. She back. 
She back for me. She back for me. She back. Come on. What the hell is this? What the hell is this, man? She back. There we go. Sheesh. The bills are due. Long overdue. Just like you see in the movies. And that's when Dame looked each of them in their eyes, told them to step off, and said that he wasn't giving them a damn thing. But this was a big mistake. Because what happened next almost ended Dame's life. One of the men lunged at him, and they started fighting for the bag. And at first, Dame was able to defend himself. But eventually, the guys decided enough was enough. One of them pulled out a gun. You, bro, you had a you had bad back. <sighs> oh, my, my bad, my bad. I didn't know you needed it this bag. You need me to unzip it for you? Here you go. Y'all, yeah, y'all fellas, have a good day. And pointed it right in Dame's face, stopping him in his tracks. Suddenly, Dame didn't feel so big and tough anymore. Damn right. He was staring down the barrel of a gun, and he saw his NBA dreams just slipping away. Dame thought it was over for him, but luckily. The gun was put away. The dudes grabbed his bag and ran off down the street. And even though he didn't get shot that night, this moment changed him for the rest of his life. Fast forward to a 2016 interview and Dame reflected on his near death experience, saying, this was one of those moments when I realized how serious it is in Oakland, how at risk you are growing up in a place like that. It made me sharper. Made me it more does. alert. It, it traumatized. I had a different appreciation just it walking it, man. around and living. It traumatized. You really free. do. Man, I was a fan of Dame already. Right over parking in like a mall parking lots, like in a bag and nothing like that, bro. Like nowadays, bro. It, mainly, I have like a lot, of, you know, like like people who know me pull up on me, but I still be kind of scared, bro. Like I'd be like, bro, like you can know me, but then you be like, oh, you can know me, be like, oh, I, you know, Cash got money, something like that. You know, what I mean, he be paying his bills. You know, it, so it's. But uh, I've got a different appreciation for him after this. I mean, just imagine the NBA without Damian Lillard. It wouldn't be the same. But that's not to say that the NBA itself is safe. I mean, Rudy Tomjanovic almost got killed by another Two! on the court. See, back in 1977, Rudy's Rockets were facing the Lakers when a fight broke out at center court. That's when Rudy decided to come and try to help break things up. But there was what? one Lakers player, Kermit Washington, who had the wrong idea. Other than what you heard, the only three players down on that play that at that time was myself, Kareem, and Kevin Cooner. A scuffle broke up between me and Kevin Cooner. And as that was being broken up, I saw something from the corner of my eye, and it was Rudy running at me at 100 miles an hour. Hey, and man. I was and yeah. I just that I made in judgment. Now I look back at it, and uh, Rudy was hurt very badly. So that was the beginning of the whole thing. Rudy got absolutely sucker punched right in the face. Oh, he wasn't going for him. And immediately dropped to the floor. But this was just one punch. I mean, how bad could it be? Well, Rudy was completely unconscious. So his coach decided to rush him to the ER. And that's where he had his face surgically repaired. And after waking up in a hospital bed, Rudy found out just how bad his injuries were. He had a broken nose, fractured jaw and skull, cracked cheekbones, and a concussion. What the hell you got in your hand? Brass knuckles and rocks? His entire head was literally broken. I mean, if he had taken just one more punch, he would have died on the court. But luckily, he didn't. And after 15 days in an LA hospital, 
Rudy's life was saved, and he was forced to wear a face mask for the rest of his career. As for the dude that punched him, you out of there. He was only fined $10,000, 10 grand for almost ending a life. My hospital bills is almost 100 grand. Unbelievable, but I'm suing. There is one player who actually did die, and then came back to life. I forgot about. I'm talking about Lamar Odom. It all started when Lamar was just a kid. He had things pretty rough. His father was always using drugs, and his mom died when he was 12. So, to distract himself from all the pain he was feeling. He started playing basketball, but eventually, Lamar discovered a deadly way to keep his demons in check. See, in 2003, at a party in Miami, Lamar tried drugs for the first time, and he was hooked immediately. And over the next few years, while playing for the Lakers, he developed an addiction. Now, Lamar didn't let it affect him on the court, so he was able to keep his issue a secret from everyone. But fast forward to 2009, and by the time he married Khloe Kardashian, he was living two completely different lives. One day, he'd be with his family, filming TV shows, just living the life of an NBA superstar. Ooh, do you see Kim's car that she has in the front yard? Lamar can't fit in it. It's dope. But he don't look like that he would be doing drugs and stuff like that, man. The next day, he'd be in the club after a Lakers game. Do Get lit. Celebrate. I never wrote that, but you know. Doing massive amounts of drugs. By 2011, Lamar's demons had him in a chokehold. All he wanted to do was get high. So he fell out of shape and his play got so bad, he was out of the NBA entirely by 2013. And at this point, Lamar Odom was his nice. problem had taken control of his life, and he just couldn't hide it anymore. So one night, after threatening his wife during a drug-fueled rage, Lamar got kicked out of the house for good. And that is when things got deadly. With no one to turn to and nothing else to do, he started using drugs every day for two straight years. And eventually, his body couldn't take it anymore. In October of 2015, Lamar was partying at a club in Crystal Nevada. That boy, a party animal, Jesus. Crystal, Nevada, and blacked out on the dance floor. He was rushed to a hospital in Las Vegas and went into a coma. Lamar suffered kidney failure had 12 Jeez. different strokes and six heart attacks, all while he was unconscious. He was put on life support and given a feeding tube. Oh, your body in overdrive, family, boy. Told him to come to the hospital to say their final goodbyes. And after three days in a coma, his doctor was ready to officially rule him dead. When out of nowhere, Lamar, opened his eyes and came back to life. Now, he wasn't able to walk or talk and had to completely relearn how to just live, but he was alive. And doctors said it was an absolute miracle. Odom was then flown to a hospital in LA where he spent the next few months in rehab. And it's been a long road to recovery ever since. I mean, Odom is still working on getting healthy to this day. How much of a difference did it make to you uh, getting professional help? I think I'm still like pretty much doing that. I ain't gonna lie, you know, shit, they like, he still might be partying. You know, he might not be doing the other party. Hopefully not. Whenever I tell my story, it works as a form of therapy. Yeah, he got the, got the jury that, you know, nice fit on. See you, Lamar. Me. Does it? Yeah, I feel lighter. I just don't feel like anything can hold me back. That's feel like shameless, shameful. I feel a little yeah. more proud. Prayers up to Lamar, man. We're rooting for you, dog. 
That was a tough section to get through. But Nick like Young's story, on the other hand, is just weird. See, Nick found out he has an enemy that wants to drown him. Back when Nick was dating Iggy Azalea, they wanted to go on a cute little date. So they thought, hey, let's go swim with some dolphins. They packed their bags, flew to Cabo, and hit up a local aquarium. <laughs> but this would turn out to be a deadly mistake. Cause when Nick jumped in the water with some dolphins, he immediately realized that he didn't drop a like and subscribe to the- God damn it, Rebo, you got me! <sighs> Piano. Yeah, that's right. Bad things happen when you don't support the channel. Some people even call it a curse. And I know you don't want that. So what are you doing? But anyways, Nick also realized he wasn't swimming with an ordinary dolphin. No, this dolphin was psychotic and out for blood. Long story, you know, vacation. Dolphin was trying to kill me for some reason. He was playing with everybody else. You know, doing what dolphins do, the ant ant and all that. You know, everybody went around circle, hanging on a little plan, you know. And when I went on, he didn't go around. He just went straight down. So he was trying to kill me. So yeah, he's trying to uh, drown me. But I seen it happening, so I jumped out the water. That's and crazy. Took off the little life vest and just threw my house, my little water shoes, and I uh, stayed outside. Wait a minute. That's I know crazy, this dolphin. Bro. This is the same dolphin that tried to kill Kevin Hart. Gotta watch out for these dolphins, man. I think I think they're smarter than we realize. I'm just thankful Nick is still alive. That was a close one. But Steph Curry should be thankful too, cause he almost died. And it wasn't even his fault. See, back in November of 2018, Curry was driving his Porsche on a highway in Oakland when all of a sudden, a white Lexus went to switch lanes, spun out of control. Bro, how you getting this good footage, bro? It's amazing. Good, good editing team, bro. And crashed into the front of Curry's car, sending him into the guardrail. And this was horrifying. Now, Curry was stuck in his car, in the middle of a highway, surrounded by other cars going 80 miles per hour. And to make things worse, while Curry was waiting for the police to show up, a black Honda lost control too, and they crashed into him from behind. But miraculously, Curry wasn't hurt, and he knew he was pretty lucky to leave the scene without even a scratch. His car was completely totaled, and all it would have taken is a hit from one wrong angle, yeah, and Curry thanks. could have died on the spot, or at the very least, suffered a career-ending injury. So, Curry only had one man to thank, God. But hey, at least Curry only lost his car, because some NBA players end up losing everything. Like, one player literally lost a hundred million dollars. And that's in the next video, right? Because he attacked his coach. Another pulled out a strap on his teammate and lost tens of millions. It's ridiculous. Oh, you want to hear more about that? Gotcha. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. Make sure you guys check out Rebound channel, man. Keep dropping the bangers, Rebound. We out of here. Everybody! The more you drop the videos, Rebound, the more I can catch the Rebound for my videos. Gotta love it.